What's good everyone? It's MJO23Dan back with another video. Today's video, I got a gem. If you guys are new here, I do Air Jordan reviews, pretty much Air Jordan comparisons, anything old, vintage, new, you name it. Anything that has to do with Air Jordans, Michael Jordan, this is the channel. So consider subscribing. I just unpackaged one of the relics. And you want to know what this one is? You guys probably know. But this is the 1989 Air Jordan 4 Black Cement. We're going to dive deep into this shoe, the history, what it means, and also do a comparison between 1999 and 2019. So be prepared, because here we go. First and foremost, shout out to Mars the Realist on Instagram. Basically, just sent me a DM and was just like, "Yo, I love your comparisons. I love your videos. Love your channel. I was wondering if you wanted me to send out this OG Air Jordan 4 Black Cement." And I was just like, I was kind of hesitant at first because I wasn't sure like how the midsole would hold up. Actually, if you see the left shoe, this is the right shoe. Uh, the left shoe is in like really bad shape. Like if you consider this being in bad shape, beat up, crumbled, everything, check this out. Like here's the left shoe and you can pretty much see like the back part is, is talking. <laughs> and uh, at any given moment, like you can, I, I can expect like the crumbs to just like fall and I have to use extreme caution when handling this shoe. Uh, this is just a piece of history already in hands. It's 30 years since this shoe has, I guess, been part of the rotation. Maybe even before then because these were gone long time ago. But um, yeah, so he had packed this up in saran wrap. And it was... Something that I like was extremely careful about when unwrapping, well, the left shoe. On camera, you guys see saw me unwrap the right shoe, and this is it. So, I think this is the one that I'm going to be reviewing for you guys, and I want to do 1999 and 2019, only because those are the ones that are the only ones that have Nike Air on the back of the shoe. Uh, I will give mention to 2012 and I will have it in the video as well. I do not own 2008's countdown pack. So you will not see this in this video. Yeah, we're going to dive into this and pretty much go over like each release. So the 1989 Air Jordan 4 Black Cement. This was also worn in the 1989 NBA All-Star game. Michael Jordan had worn it throughout the season. And this was the shoe that he hit the shot. Now, if you guys don't know the significance of the shot, the Chicago Bulls were playing the Cleveland Cavaliers, and over the course of Michael Jordan's career, they have always been shot down by previous playoff teams, and the Cleveland Cavaliers were one of them. So, really, the significance of the shot in 1989 is what propelled Michael Jordan to further win his repeat three-peats. You know what I mean? So, it really propelled him to excel in the game of basketball. And so with that shot, it really carried the Bulls over into another realm. So even though they didn't win that year, you know, the Detroit Pistons were still at the top of the mountain uh, in the East around that time. And then, of course, you guys know 1991 against the Lakers, Bulls versus Lakers. But again, the shot is what propelled Michael Jordan's career, uh, knowing that, you know, he was going to be advancing into the NBA playoffs and furthermore. But yeah, the Black Cement... 
Air Jordan 4, now called the Bread, as you guys know. And I did share my thoughts about uh, Jordan Brand's troll marketing when it comes to actual bread loaves, you know, in that commercial. I'm not sure why they did it. Uh, a lot of people did say that it wasn't for us, the older generation, like myself. Um, it was more geared towards the newer generation. But my thought is that you can still tell beautiful stories with Michael Jordan's career and his brand. So um, you guys can go ahead and, and watch that video that I did with Civic Kid 96 I'll put a card up here. Uh, so you guys can watch it, but I don't want to repeat that. I just want to give like real true appreciation to what we have here and it is the 1989 Air Jordan 4 Black Cement. So I have never owned, let alone like had something like this in my hands before, but I definitely appreciate like where Jordan Brand or Nike was at the time. These things really went through some battles and you can see that it's heavily cracked because the shoes were made of synthetic leather otherwise known as durbuck and you can see pretty much they call this like the tennis ball method where you remove the durbuck from the shoe but this is naturally doing it and so um, these were in a lot of like late 80s uh, early 90s shoes so you'll see like if you revisit uh, shoes from that era they will do this over time um, and this is just through wear and tear you know to each their own if you like it if you don't uh, if you guys appreciate more of the suede or new buck on shoes but Nike did in fact use Durabuck for their shoes so you know just just off the bat I can really see like Tinker Hadfield's mind just racing and just considering like the transition from the Air Jordan 3 onto the 4 and how we should, you know, pretty much stylize it to Michael's liking. He still wanted a mid-cut shoe. That was his preference on court. And then still something that gave support. You guys familiar with this book? This book's called Driven From Within and it's by Michael Jordan. It's also edited by Mark Vansel. But... Uh, it pretty much shows or tells a story about Nike and his Air Jordans. And so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the four section so you guys can see what we're talking about here. So coming into, you know, the culture here, we already see the effect that it's had on society and the Jordan brand. And so we see that the shoes, the white cement fours, which also released in 2016 as a retro. But you can see the shoe here in Do the Right Thing. This is Spike Lee's movie. And Buggin' Out pretty much has a toothbrush. He puts it up on a fire hydrant and he's, you know, going at the shoe with a scuff mark that's on it from the guy who was on the bicycle wearing a Boston Celtics uh, throwback tee or whatever it was. And so he's going after it and you can see like the effect that nike has had within spike lee's commercials here and you know throughout social at the time but in it i'll just read a little bit it says with the air jordan 4 and this is tinker you know talking i wanted to get further performance innovation which was essentially what michael was doing on the on the basketball court i mostly focused on the upper the jordan 4 was the first time we had used what is called an over molded mesh so you guys see the over molded mesh right there on the upper. And then most people would not spend a lot of money on a basketball shoe with a mesh, a mesh panel, even though it is a good idea because it's breathable and makes the shoe lighter. It cheapened the shoe a little bit in the minds of some consumers. I wanted the shoe to be lighter with features no one had done before. So instead of starting with some kind of romantic story of Michael's life or something I saw him do, I started with a technical perspective. I couldn't do a normal mesh, so we dipped the mesh in a vat of soft plastic, then blew air through it to clear out all the plastic in between. So now the mesh was coated and it became a design feature. We also developed a multi-port lace locking system. So you guys can see that on these waffle patterns right up here. I had invented what we called lace locks, and in the four, we did an elaboration on the theme 
you could lace through any of the nine ports so that you had 18 different positions. It was a little bit more of a technical story and a little less of a personality story, but that's where Michael was at the time of his life. He was mastering different phases of his game as a player and growing into these different roles of husband and father off the court, he didn't want his particular shoe to be too fashionable because he had come out with the three and all the luxurious leather. The shoe was about getting back to work, being a little bit more utilitarian while doing a couple things no one has done before if it reflected his state of mind. His mindset was about getting back to the basics. The decision to stay with Nike was behind him, but everything was ahead of him on the basketball court. So there is Tinker Hatfield really just sharing a little bit of the design feature of the Air Jordan 4, which I thought was pretty cool. So you still had the Jumpman on the tongue, which is pretty much Michael Jordan, right? And then you had the flight insignia signature up at the top. And at this time, Nike was also pushing their flight series. So you had different variations of what is categorized as a flight shoe. So, uh, you know, under that umbrella, there was also Force, which was like Charles Barkley, David Robinson, all those guys. And this was the flight series. So they paid tribute to that on the patch, if you guys have not, you know, really known that. And then on the back, something that is still questionable to this day, and a lot of people will talk about like why this was upside down, because they said that back in the day, they would flip the tongues in, you know, downwards, just like this, so that you can see the Air Jordan, which personally, in 89, I was nine years old, 1990, 10 years old, I didn't see that with anybody rocking this shoe and people were actually flipping the tongues down. So there's also another story going around whereas, you know, Michael would do it in some games and it was upside down or the tongues were flipped forward. And so when opponents would look down at his shoes, they would see that it is an Air Jordan and then he just like dominate them on the court, which <laughs> it sounds like a Michael thing to do, right? But yeah, in all its glory, this is the 89 Air Jordan 4 Black Cement. Definitely a great shoe. Man, I still can't believe like this is in my hands. It's crazy. On the inside here, it's stuffed with newspaper and it's pretty much got, well, it's supposed to have the Nike Air branding on the inside, but it's like an infrared looking insole now. It, is this back part, you know, this color of the back piece of the tongue, but it's supposed to match that. But I think because of wear and everything, it's kind of turned like infraredish looking. So you'll see that. And then it's attached, you know, on the strobe board with, man, and I can't, I don't, I don't want to like mess this up too much, but it, it's, I'll probably put some B-roll in here so you guys can take a look, but it's got the elastic bands on there. And then also, it's got like the inside tag here and it's got the uh, 88 tag size 10. Man, this is my size. This is crazy. Uh, yo, Mars, I think I'm going to have to like make you an offer. We'll see. No. But yo, this is the 89. Let me go ahead and introduce to you the 1999. All right. So here's the 1999 and you can see. The midsole is starting to go. There's some oxidation happening uh, all throughout the shoe. And this is pretty much 10 years from 1989. And Jordan Brand at the time pretty much wanted to pay tribute to the 10 year anniversary. So it looks pretty much just like the OG, but I can see that like it's got a skinnier looking netting up top. Still has that Durabuck upper, as you can see. Uh, this one is in dead stock condition. As you guys know, you know, pretty much know me by now, I am a dead stock collector. So I have stuff from like the 90s that has been dead stock that I've kept. And it's always been like a rock one, stock one type of mentality for me. And I, it all started with me collecting basketball cards back in 1991. I didn't get into shoes until 1995. Like the basketball card thing, the sports card thing was always like, you got to keep your, sh your, your cards like in these plastic containers, the sleeves and all that. And like the corners, you can't mess up because then it will lose its value. And somehow that transitioned into sneakers. And so 
with me i always wanted to wear the shoes but then you know hopefully keep one for the collection is what i did with this one here and i can remember like at that time it was one of those things where it was like yeah maybe someday i'll be able to like rock this second pair at a, at a later time but you know shoes come and shoes come and shoes come and release and you know by that point it's like you have so many shoes you don't know what to do with it so it just became a collection it just transitioned from that but basically it's just like the 1989 it has the edges of here etched and so you can see like these white lines something you won't see on the 2019 you know the netting is just like the 1989 where it goes alongside this part of the wing you know over the years like 2008 2012 they changed that they actually made them like perpendicular and it didn't match like the look of the wing alongside the netting so that was always something that like I always really wanted for them to get right so again like 1999 is something that was you know pretty close already to the uh, OG let me go ahead and reintroduce the original so that you guys can see and I'm just not like rambling you guys can just like take a look and you know nike air on the back this is what we're doing with the comparison for this video and you can see like 1999 is a lot straighter than it is on 1989 it still has a little bit of an off center to it and you'll see with the 2019 it's way off center go ahead and flip this over so you guys can see the tongues there you know you can see that the jump man has progressed over time 1999 is a skinnier jump man 1989 you know regular i suppose but i do like the script of the flight uh down below on the 89 like it's it's a little bit skinnier you can see that you know somebody almost penciled that in whereas on the 1999 it's bolder you know it's wider like it's cool like you can see it but like there's something about 89 that i really like and then one thing that i also wanted to point out was like the um the stiffness of the wing here so it's uh it's pretty tough like if you compare 2019 it's going to be really bendable really flimsy now that is going to be the same as it is on the 1999 so they did that one proper so if you guys really wanted to do like a comparison between 1999 and 1989 i would say that they are about you know similar when it comes to like these two now let me show you guys the 2019 all right so 2019 a lot of you guys hit i'm pretty sure like there was some to the point that were like doubling and tripling up maybe even doing a quadruple up but you know i i i don't have too many complaints about 2019's version it's gonna be a wearable product it's gonna have the nike air on the back it's just the story i didn't like but you know as far as like black cement bread it doesn't matter the nickname to me like we pretty much know what you guys are talking about but you know the shape I feel is still not there and if you're going to be remastering shoes I think you should still revisit the 1989 and see like where you're at because you can see that the toe box it goes up and it doesn't have that slant as it does with the 1989. And it's going to be really tough for me again to be handling this because it's so fragile. But you can see what I mean when you see the toe box of the 1989 in comparison to the 2019. So it's just different. It is also a Durabuck upper, but you don't see the white lines or the edges of the 2019. And I feel like that was something that was sorely missed on the 2019. And, you know, that look, just the the break between the panels and everything, I feel like that should have been here on the 2019. The netting's great. It's not on the actual mesh. So you can see that it's off the mesh, just like it is on 1989 and 1999. 2008 and 2012 was a different story so check this one out all right so here is the 2012 box these went for 160 and 
when the raffle system was pretty new, my wife and I were actually going around town and trying to get this shoe. And we actually won at least like seven pairs. I ended up selling some, trading some away, keeping some. But this is pretty much like the only one that I have available now. And, you know, I just I just kept it just for references and reference pur purposes and collection purposes. So um, the OG, it didn't have, uh, I believe, the hard plastic uh, hang tag. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't remember that being on there. Uh, the 99 did have the plastic hang tag. And I can go ahead and do a quick comparison of that. So you can see the hang tags here. This is going to be the 1999. This is the 2019. The 1999 version of the hang tag, it's like thin, it's bendable. Like I feel like if you bend it even more, like you can actually put creases into this. But it's got a clear, you know, backing here with the Nike Air. And this was a nice tag as well. And then, you know, 2019, like I think they did it all right. It was as close, I guess, to the, well, it's not even that close. But, you know, it's just as close as the uh, 1999. So, you know, just a little throwback. And then they also did a key, uh, keychain type with the ball link. And then with this one, they pretty much did like, a, you know, a plastic tagging here. But anyways, 2012, like you can see the netting is what I was talking about, is they actually attached it to the mesh. And then with the, you know, appropriation of the wing to the netting pattern, like they went straight up on that and didn't actually go alongside with the wing. So uh, I just think that was just like a design thing. Jordan Brand is always going to change a retro from one to the other and it'll really never get back to what we all want in an OG. So they can try all they want. Um, I don't know if they do it to troll or they do it just to differentiate from the models, which I really feel that I think they, they do. This is this is the cream of the crop here. Like this is this is what everyone wants and you want to get it super close to the original. And I feel like the 2019, they got it there for the most part, but there are still little differences when it comes to the actual shoe itself. So I myself picked up four pairs of these. Uh, I sold one to a friend because he missed out, and then I kept three for myself. I'm going to rock one for sure this, uh, this coming weekend, and I want to see like how it does on feet. Um, this is definitely nostalgia. Uh, it wasn't the shoe that started it for me. Of course, you guys know that story with the Concord 11 for me, but this is, you know, a throwback for 1989. I'm going to go ahead and throw in, like, whatever shots that you guys want to see as far as comparisons are concerned and, uh, you know, let you guys just visually see all that. But uh, hopefully I gave you all the information that you guys wanted to hear about it. One more thing, actually. So let's talk, actually two more things. So let's talk about this bump right here. This is something that was on the OG and also the 1999. And this bump right here is significant because of shape. So they actually brought that back and I thought that was uh, pretty good. Along with this piece here, you see this, the stitching portion right here, right underneath the wing. It doesn't go all the way to the end of this panel here or this stitch line. So in 1999, they actually went up towards the stitch line, but not actually touching. And then on the medial side, they didn't do that as well. Here is the medial side of that for the OG 89. Here's the non-existent bump for the 2012. They also had a Jumpman back on it. And then that stitch does not go all the way to that line. And then finally, the 2019, you can see that there is a little bit of a bump back there for its return. And then the stitch all goes all the way across, hitting that panel or that stitch line right there, as well as on the medial side of the shoe. So again, these are all little things that they all change from retro to retro. Again, 
It is MJO 23 Dan. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for your support. I hope you like these comparison videos. They're something that I truly like doing because I want to see the progression of where Jordan Brand has been, where it's gone, and where it's going. So, you know, just sharing all these shoes here, it's just really like a culmination of the heritage and the story that is Jordan Brand. And I feel like they should put that energy into making the shoes better as well as marketing the shoes for the next generation. If you guys like the content, please consider subscribing. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And like the video, comment below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.